description of devotional service, which is that process of transcendence. So now the next, how, what time is it? Eight. Eight o'clock. Okay, we've got a little more time. The next section is called Sensual Attraction. This extreme desire to serve the Lord is manifest in the transcendental land of Braja, and it is specifically manifested among the gopis. The gopis' love for Krishna is so elevated that for our understanding it is sometimes explained as being lusty desire. The author of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, Kaviraj Krishnadas, has explained the distinction between lusty desire and the service attitude in this statement. Lusty desire refers to the desire to gratify one's personal senses, and transcendental desire refers to the desire for serving the senses of the Lord. In the material world, there is no such thing as a lover's wanting to please the senses of his beloved. Actually, in the material world, everyone wants mainly to gratify his own personal senses. The gopis, however, wanted nothing at all but to gratify the senses of the Lord, and there is no instance of this in the material world. Therefore, the gopis' ecstatic love for Krishna is sometimes described by scholars as being like the lusty desire of the material world. But actually, this should not be taken as a literal fact. It is simply a way of trying to understand the transcendental situation. Huh? The gopis were lusty to please Krishna. Huh? In the material world, people get lusty for their own satisfaction. Huh? But in the spiritual world, the gopis especially, they get lusty to please Krishna. Try to understand. This is almost unheard of almost unknown in the material world, almost impossible to experience this in the material world. Huh? Because everybody here wants to get pleasure for themselves. But in the spiritual world, everyone's just so much in love with Krishna, so much feeling obligated to Krishna, so much feeling uh, transcendental pleasure just to be with Krishna, that all they want to do is serve him. So nice. Great devotees up to the standard of Uddhava are very dear friends of the Lord, and they desire to follow in the footsteps of the gopis. So the gopis' love for Krishna is certainly not material lusty desire. Otherwise, how could Uddhava aspire to follow in their footsteps? Another instance is Lord Chaitanya himself. After accepting the sannyas order of life, he was very, very strict about avoiding the association of women, but still he taught that there is no better method of worshipping Krishna than that conceived by the gopis. Thus, the gopis' method of worshipping the Lord, as if impelled by lusty desire, was praised very highly even by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This very fact means that although the attraction of the gopis for Krishna appears to be lusty, it is not in the least bit material. Unless one is fully situated in the transcendental position, the relationship of the gopis with Krishna is very difficult to understand. But because it appears to be just like ordinary dealings of young boys and girls, it is sometimes misinterpreted to be like the ordinary sex of this material world. Unfortunately, persons who cannot understand the transcendental nature of the love affairs of the gopis and Krishna, take it for granted that Krishna's love affairs with the gopis are mundane transactions, and therefore they sometimes indulge in painting licentious pictures in some modernistic style. I've seen these, they're really ugly. On the other hand, the lusty desire of Kubja is described by learned scholars as being almost lusty desire. Kubja was a hunchbacked woman who also wanted Krishna with great ecstatic love. But her desire for Krishna was almost mundane, and so her love cannot be compared to the love of the gopis. Her loving affection for Krishna is called Kama Praya, or almost like the gopis' love for Krishna. You know that story about Kubja? 
Kubja was a servant of uh, Kamsa in Mathura. And when Krishna and Balaram went to Mathura, they were walking around and they met Kubja. She was bringing sandalwood paste to Kamsa. But when Kubja saw Krishna and Balaram, she was so attracted that she offered the sandalwood paste to them instead. And because of this, Krishna grabbed her by the ears and pulled and straightened her. <laughs> so she wasn't hunchback anymore. So what did she do? She immediately went into business as a prostitute. <laughs> and uh, for her first customer, she wanted to have Krishna. <laughs> so she invited Krishna. And uh, after killing Kangsa, Krishna came there with Uddhava. And so when they came, of course, the whole place was all decked out very fancy and like that. And um, Kubja was there with all her girlfriends. And so when Krishna and Uddhava came, they offered them a very nice sitting place. But Uddhava didn't take that. He sat on the floor. And uh, Krishna, uh, instead of sitting down on this very nice sitting place, he simply took uh, Kubja and went into the bedroom. And we don't know what happened because he closed the door. Anyway, the, uh, the point is Kubja had some personal ambition. See? She wanted to be the most famous prostitute. She wanted to be, uh, she wanted to have some status in the eyes of her girlfriends. We see this often in feminine psychology, um, in masculine psychology too. They want to impress their friends, huh? So they'll do these outrageous things. Uh, but uh, in her case, she had genuine attraction for Krishna. It's just that she also had some personal benefit in mind. Whereas the gopi's love for Krishna is completely pure. The gopi's love Krishna with this intense love, which is not duplicated anywhere else. That's unique. It stands above all other aspects of devotional service. And it's actually the source of devotional service because Srimati Radharani is the pleasure potency of Krishna, the Vladini Shakti, personified. So Srimati Radharani is the leader of the gopis. And the gopis, there are two wings of gopis, the right wing and the left wing. Uh, and the, the right wing gopis are, as you might understand, uh, a little more conservative. They're more submissive and more... Um, uh, responsive to the Lord's direct desires. But the left-hand gopis are, uh, are uh, led by Srimati Radharani herself, and they're a little more feisty. <laughs> but that we'll get into all this esoteric psychology step by step as we go deeper into the nectar of devotion. Uh, we just finished the first, the first uh, wave and now we're, we've begun the second wave of nectar of devotion. There's four waves in nectar of devotion. And one by one, we'll go through them all. So we'll, uh, we'll stop here and we'll uh, take some questions. <laughs>